Often, relationships in comics know how to pull on our heartstrings. Seeing some of our favorite characters fall in love with one another is usually something that gets fans excited. But in the world of superheroes, as in reality, sometimes some weird romantic goes down. No judgment, people, but it is one thing to fall in love with someone, a different thing if you're a comic book writer who pens a story about a superhero hooking up with their animal sidekick. You guys see where this is going. Today, we are counting down the top 10 shocking superhero couple moments you won't believe. And if this intro hinted at anything, you're gonna wanna stick around till number one, friends. I do promise this is a safe for work video. <laughs> Let's get to it. Starting us off in at number 10, Aviax and a dinosaur. Okay, seriously people, I swear this is a safe for work list. The Wanderers, a spin-off team from the Legion of Superheroes and DC's continuity, were spacefaring heroes who went around the galaxy being heroic and stuff. And apparently, it gets weird in space. One of their members was a fellow named Aviax, who had the ability to morph into various kinds of birds. Here's where it takes a dive into Weirdville. In 1988, the Wanderers visited a planet that had a whole ton of dinosaurs on it. The dinosaurs were becoming extinct, and Aviax was like, yo, I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna interfere with nature, and I'm gonna save this race by becoming a prehistoric bird and getting busy with a dinosaur. <laughs> Yeah. It was eventually revealed that a radioactive fog was the result of the radiation that was killing off these dinosaurs. But that did not stop Aviax from going around to save the planet by shagging a prehistoric reptilian. He had a skewed logic behind this. Since he was immune to the radiation, he figured he'd be able to pass on the immunity genes, therefore saving the race. Watching him pitch this to the rest of his team is probably one of the best things I've read in a while. His team's like, what? No, no. Really? You're, you're gonna, oh, oh, this is awkward now, isn't it? But the best part is, he only mated with one dinosaur. And then he just effed off, never actually seen the experiment through to determine whether or not it worked. So all in all, dude just wanted to get it on with the dinosaur. And of course, this is the cover. Yeah. And at number nine, She-Hulk and Juggernaut. Back to some normality here at this number, sort of. We're talking about that time that She-Hulk and Juggernaut got it on and destroyed a hotel room. At the time, Juggy, as She-Hulk liked to call him, was trying out heroism and he was reformed. She-Hulk was actually hired as his defense lawyer. She-Hulk aka Jennifer Walters is a lawyer and a damn good one at that. But hooking up with your client is probably not the most professional thing she could have done. There is a panel of the two of them lying in bed post hookup with the room absolutely trashed and Juggy saying, sometimes women are just plain better than men. Whew. Later on, this was retconned and they had hooked up in a parallel universe. She would later get ripped on by various characters concerning this hookup, usually under the pretense that it was a rumor. And it really pissed her off. I do not blame her. And at number 8, Hercules and Wolverine. In 2012, Marvel and writer Greg Pak introduced an alternate universe in which Wolverine was gay, and his boyfriend was Hercules, which went down in Extreme X-Men issue 10. Hercules, an Avenger who had his own limited series in the Marvel main continuity a couple of times, hooked up with Logan after they, I quote, slew the worst monster monster who had ever threatened the dominion of Canada. <laughs> it's gay and it's Canadian, is there anything more that you want? This rumble with this monster resulted in them revealing their love for one another in this panel. Now Herc's daddy dearest Zeus didn't like this, claiming that he was the only god allowed to mingle and get freaky with humans, although really he was probably just really homophobic. He then banned Hercules and Logan to the pits of Tartarus. Speaking of X-Men characters though, in at number 7 we have Magneto and Rogue. Now there have been plenty of scandalous X-Men relationships over the years, and while we'll be touching on more later on this list, let's take a look at one that just makes us feel a little uneasy. Magneto and Rogue. Ugh. The first instance in which these two romantically connected was in Uncanny X-Men issue 274. Now the two of them were in the Savage Land together and there was a flirtation that happened. Well, a wee bit of action. But it never really went anywhere. Minus some frustrating will they won't they plot lines and stories to follow. But then, as if that wasn't enough, in the Age of Apocalypse timeline, they were lovers. With Rogue hardcore rejecting Gambit for the Master of Magnetism. He's like old enough to be her father. No judgment, but like when it comes to Magneto, a little bit of judgment there. In at number six, Moira and Apocalypse. Alright friends, heads up for some major spoilers featuring the recent Power of Ten and House of X series. In June 2019, the reveal of a very odd coupling got the internet talking. X-Men ally Mora McTaggart and villain Apocalypse. The teaser for Powers of Ten, spelt Powers of X, was revealed accompanied by the phrase, Fear the Future, in which the two kiss inside of an Egyptian tomb. Now for context, the recent House of X and Powers 
hours of 10 features different time periods, along with revealing the 10 lives that Moira has lived. In House of X issue 2, it was revealed that Moira had been a mutant all along, a mutant with the powers of reincarnation, who used the knowledge that she gained over the course of all of her lives and began manipulating events in order to save mutant kind from a doomed future. The powers of 10 occurs in a different timeline, a different life of Moira's, in which she sees that the best possible outcome for the mutant race is one in which Apocalypse wins, and she helps sway his rule by being married to him. Talk about taking one for the team. And at number 5, Batwoman breaks up with Maggie Sawyer. In 2014, in J.H. Williams III and W. Hayden Blackman's run on Batwoman in the New 52, the titular character was meant to marry her girlfriend, GCPD Captain Maggie Sawyer. It was a pretty big deal, and the writer artist duo had even won a GLAAD Media Award for their work on the comic for the positive representation of a queer couple in mainstream comic books. But then, Williams and Blackman walked off the series when DC announced that, contrary to the story that they were working on in which Batman proposed to Maggie, the two would not be getting married after all. Their reasoning? Well, like Batman. Man, Batwoman and superheroes in general can't get married and be happy. It's unrealistic. The internet freaked out, and Batwoman's story devolved into a very controversial lesbian vampire rape narrative that was highly criticized before the series was canned altogether. Now, that vampire storyline occurred after the creative team had walked and a new one took over, in which Batman broke up with Maggie via a note. She dumped her with a handwritten note. Needless to say, it's a shame what happened with the series, which wasn't just praised for its representation, but its phenomenal artwork and writing as well. And at number 4, Harley Quinn and Nightwing get freaky. Whew. Harley is pretty much over the Joker these days. While her and Poison Ivy's relationship became canon over the last few years, that pairing is far from the most scandalous coupling that Harley has been involved in. While there's a few other odd hookups out there, specifically one with Lobo that we would just rather forget, the one that got the internet the most rallied up occurred outside of the panels and on the small screen, in the animated Batman and Harley Quinn movie. Batman ends up working with Harley as a means of tracking down Poison Ivy, and in the process, Harley gets into a fight with Nightwing, who she then knocks unconscious. When he wakes up, he's tied to a bed, and Harley begins to seduce him while he persuades her to help him and Batman find Ivy. And the scene ends with her turning off the lights and climbing on top of Nightwing. Cut to Batman walking in on the two. It, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, really, can you blame either of them? Yeah. And at number 3, Cyclops' affair with Emma Frost. After Emma Frost joined up with the X-Men, the character would find herself helping out Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, undergo psychic therapy as a means of dealing with his trauma. But in the process of all of this, the two ended up having a psychic affair, hooking up in each other's minds during these therapy sessions. Now, at the time, Scott, who was married to Jean Grey, was having some relationship issues with the powerful redhead, who actually uses her own abilities to interrupt him and Emma, psychically walking in on them doing it. Shortly afterwards, Jean would die. Again, and Cyclops would become involved in a real relationship with Emma, which did not bode well with the other X-Men, who all felt that they were doing a disservice to Jean's memory. What's worse than having a psychological affair that your wife interrupts? Incest is! And that brings us to number 2 friends, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. It only goes downhill from here. While this hasn't occurred in the main continuity, thankfully, this brother and sister duo knocked boots in the Ultimate Universe, Earth 1610. They also did this long before Game of Thrones did, so they are the OG sister brother lovers, people. Ugh. Essentially, this is the product of a really traumatizing childhood. Pietro was rejected by his father, and seeking comfort like that of his dead mothers, he found himself hooking up with his sister, who looked like said mother. Yeah, there's there's a lot psychologically going on here that is kind of messed up, but it is the Ultimate Universe, so. And speaking of, no one really cared about it in the Ultimate Universe, minus Captain America who was like straight up shook about the whole thing. I mean he is from the 40s so. That actually still doesn't make it better. And what's worse, once they hooked up and Wolverine, who might have been the father of them in the Ultimate Universe, watched on secretly in some bushes. Yeah, no bueno. And finally in at number 1, Supergirl and Comet. What's worse than incest? Bestiality! So Supergirl made out with her horse Comet when he took the physical shape of a human man. Is it still bestiality if the beast now looks like a dude? Yeah, it is. Of course, this is a product of the Silver Age, specifically in Action Comics issue 292 from 1962. Now, Supergirl had been hit with kryptonite rays and was falling to Earth when, magically, out of nowhere, her butt was saved by a mysterious white horse with superpowers. Now, in the following issue, we learn that this horse, named Comet, used to be a centaur in ancient Greece. He was given a potion to turn into a human, but he accidentally drank a potion that turned him into a horse. Man, I hate when that happens. Flash forward to Supergirl helping out Superman when he needed a flying horse to help a fellow named Prince Endor of Xerox. The prince, to say thanks, grants Comet one wish, which of course was to turn human every time a comet passed through Earth's solar system. Which is 
Like, was he just like, that's my name. I'm gonna wait till a comet goes by and then I'll be a man for a little bit. Now he wouldn't have any powers, but he would be a regular dude for a little while. Here's where things take a turn towards the strange. As soon as Comet transforms into a dude, he takes the name Bronco Bill and then makes out with Supergirl. And Bronco Bill doesn't tell her who he really is. Yeah, just just let that let that sink in for a sec. Hmm. All right, there we have it, friends. What other weird and wacky superhero relationships have made you feel uncomfortable in the past? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. If you guys dug this video, you know what to do. Spread that love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more lists just like this one. In the meantime, though, I'll catch you all in the next video.